Good evening, my name is Duncan Farside and you're watching The Whole Truth. Nowadays you can hardly step foot outside your home without hearing about Rust. Named most loved programming language seven years in a row on a survey from the website people go to when they don't know how to program yet. I don't know about you, but I'm getting sick of this constant barrage of propaganda about Rust. If you listen to them, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Seems weird to use toast as the benchmark, but whatever you say, mate. I think it's high time someone had the courage to tell the people the truth about the Rust language and all the very real harm it's doing the tech industry. Here's 10 reasons why you shouldn't use Rust. Number one, it's bad for job security. Rust advocates say it prevents a lot of mistakes at compile time, and while that sounds good at first, consider how many people are currently employed fixing the same bugs over and over in languages like Go. It doesn't matter if they're data races, zero value bugs, or swallowed errors. These are the things that keep people clothed and fed. Number two, it moves too slow. Rust has been around for 12 years and stable for eight, and it still lacks support for null. Almost every other language supports it. C, C++, Java, C Octothorpe, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, but not Rust. It has the option type, but it's just not the same, because it forces you to handle both the sum and the none case, making it more complicated for no proper reason. Number three, it moves too fast. Rust is released every six weeks and has new language additions every three years. Before 2018, if you wanted to use a macro exported by a crate, you had to do this. And now you have to do this. So sure, they still both work and you can mix crates from different editions and the compiler can migrate your code to the next edition. But I mean, how are we supposed to keep track of these things? Number four, it's too opinionated. Rust format is suppressing hours of constructive discussion about the proper way to format code, stifling the creativity of individual developers in the name of collaboration. And everything is built with a single tool. It's always cargo this, cargo that. In C, you get to choose between make, CMake, QMake, PreMake, Auditor, Scons, G and Basil, Buck, Ninja, Messen, and many others. Number five, it's not opinionated enough. Async Rust works for both high-performance web applications and embedded hardware, and that means you need to add one line to your cargo toml file. That is simply too much. A good standard library must include at least two implementations of whatever we thought was a good idea 15 years ago. That way we're covered. Number six, it's dangerous to democracy. Rust makes it too easy to include third-party code in your project. Every C project has to remake the same basic utilities because linking against anything is a pain in the ass. But in Rust, you can just use types from the standard library or some popular crate that everybody uses. And you know what it's called when everybody uses the same thing. That's right, communism. Number seven, it's not inclusive enough. Most programming language communities are happy to welcome bigots, modern day Nazis, and even convicted sex offenders. That is not the case for Rust. Tell me then, where are those people supposed to go? Should we really ban them just because they threaten psychological and physical harm to fellow human beings? That hardly seems fair. Number eight, it's bad for the economy. Companies like Intel, AMD and Apple work hard every year to come up with faster and faster hardware, but programs made with Rust run fine on machines from a decade ago, making it hard to justify the upgrade. Granted, compiling takes quite a few resources, but that only concerns developers, which are a tiny portion of the market. Number nine, it's bad for the environment. When the Rust team is about to make a change to the compiler or the standard library, they'll often do what is called a crater run, where they compile every Rust project ever published and see if it introduces regressions. That takes up a lot of valuable computing power we could be using to mine cryptocurrency instead. Number 10, it's bad for security researchers. With C or C++, you can just look at some code funny and buffer overflows basically fall in your lap. You can use these to track refugees, spy on political activists, or take a hospital's infrastructure offline until they pay ransom. Rust makes you work so much harder for this, to the point where one can't help but wonder, what do they have to hide? This has been The Whole Truth. I'm Duncan Farside, reminding you, you can't spell progress without ogre. Thanks for watching.